Interstate 95. Yeah. All right, here it is. We made it. The last original I-95 full-length video recording. We got super cuts coming soon. And today we are talking about Interstate 95 from New York to Washington, D.C. We did the northbound version. Now we're doing the southbound. It is one of the busiest sections or the busiest interstate highway section in the entire country. Let's take a look at our route. We see I-95 from northeast of the northeast to south of the south. And today, again, we're just talking about its central core from New York to DC. You're watching Control City Freak. This is the YouTube channel that talks about interstate highways and the places that they're signed to go to. If you dig this kind of content, why not give us a like? And if you really dig it, why not subscribe? Yeah, subscribe. And here's the part where I remind you that you can request your exit for a $5 super sticker or super thanks in the comments. We've got lots of those. I really appreciate them. And we are going to have a few more today. I will post those in the description. Right now, 95 is finished, but you can still request 95 exits for the super cuts. And of course, 96, 97, 99 requests are welcome as well. Thanks so much. All right, let's talk about southbound I-95 all day today. We left off the Connecticut border last week and now we see we are on 95 South New York and we have the exit for 287 for White Plains. We get the Cuomo or Tappan Zee Bridge signed right here. We see this is a toll road here in this part, the New England Thruway, but only northbound. Southbound, it is free, so good times for us now. This is very near exit 13. This is the East Chester Scrap facility where New York City Metro buses that are retired are brought to be scrapped. So this is pretty interesting. And this exit or site was requested by Rocket Ship Gaming. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And we see at random interchanges, it is 95 South New York. So no surprise there. We don't get any kind of welcome to New York City sign, but we do get a Bronx County line here as we head into the city. And here we get truck route 2678 Whitestone Bridge, use exit 6A. Here we get the Hutchinson Parkway and Whitestone Bridge. Cars only because this is a parkway and Whitestone Bridge truck traffic, use exit 6A. Here's exit 7A, South 695 and two South 295, the Throgs Neck Bridge in Long Island. 95 is now signed for the George Washington Bridge, which makes sense. And here at exit 6B, we get West 278, the start of 278, the BQE, Brooklyn Queens Expressway, along with other roads. And it is signed as the RFK Bridge to Manhattan, which also is better known as the Triborough Bridge. And 95 South for the George Washington Bridge and Newark. We are going to be meeting I-87, the Major Deegan Expressway for Queens and Albany. And 95 is signed for the George Washington Bridge and Newark once again. However, on I-87, 95 is signed south for Trenton instead of Newark, which is a little weird. I don't like all the Trenton signage and we're gonna see a lot of it today. Newark does make sense since, you know, it's big and 95 goes there. We're going to be meeting the GWB pretty soon. So we see the upper and lower level split and that we will be meeting the Henry Hudson Parkway in Manhattan shortly. And here we cross into Manhattan. I believe this is the Harlem River, not the East River. Uh, I was told in previous comments. And here's what I-95 in Manhattan looks like going across the top of Manhattan. We see it goes under a lot of tunnels. There's a lot built up on top of I-95, which would make sense it being Manhattan and all. Now we're on 95 South, New Jersey. They get rid of Newark and they just say New Jersey here. And we get this warning for last exit in New York. And between caps, we get another 95 South New Jersey, and they really wanted to let us know that this is the last exit in New York. Beware. Here's what it looks like heading toward the GWB in the lower level. We saw the upper level earlier. And here it is on the upper level, and this is as good of a look as we get at the bridge. This is as far as Street View goes. But here's a look at the George Washington Bridge on Google Maps looks like a bridge. And welcome to New Jersey. We're in the Palisades and we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up. Fort Lee, we got one, nine, 46, four, 
No room for control cities on those, too many roads to fire off. And then we throw 80 into the mix, so a whole sea of roads with local and express lanes. 95, 80, and New Jersey Turnpike. 80, for some reason, a smaller sign than 95. And so we get South 95 to New Jersey Turnpike and to I-80. So I-80 Express, Patterson, I-80 Local, Hackensack. And we see we're going to be spawning I-80 soon here at exit 69. Nice. Here's another look at the beginning of I-80. So we see South 95, Newark, and West 80, Hackensack, and Patterson. So express lanes, only Patterson, and local lanes, Hackensack as well. And here we are on 95 turning south as we leave I-80 behind. Just for kicks, just to show you, going on I-80, we get end 80 and begin 95 north, George Washington Bridge, New York City, and we get South 95 has no control city other than New Jersey Turnpike. So if you're going on eastbound 80, we don't get a control for the way we're going here. No Newark, no Philly, no Trenton. And we are now South 95 for Newark, and this is our last exit before toll for the Ridgefields. And we are now going to be splitting into our east and west legs of I-95. So 95 South, Trenton, Lincoln Tunnel. So Trenton. Again, we're going with Trenton. So Turnpike South, 16 West, and Exit 17, Lincoln Tunnel here. This is not actually the exit for Lincoln Tunnel. We just see that it's going to be coming up if you take the eastern extension. And so we are taking the west leg this time, and this is what it looks like in the west leg as we cross into the Meadowlands area. And we see Giant Stadium up ahead, and it is going to be Meadowlands Complex and American Dream. So they don't mention the stadium there, but they mention this mall that they've been building out there. And we're on 95 South Newark again. So Newark is back, no more Trenton. New Jersey, nothing if not consistent. And here is our toll as we continue on the west leg. Can't really see the stadiums because they're blocked by this giant mall here, the American Dream Mall, which maybe it's come back, I don't know, but I read it had a rocky start. And we're still on 95 South Newark, and we're meeting three, four, Secaucus, and Rutherford. I've never heard of Rutherford. I've heard of East Rutherford because that's where the football stadium is, but okay, I guess there would be a Rutherford too. And now we meet 280 for Newark and Kearney. So because we have a Newark exit here, we're now on 95 South Trenton, which again is a terrible choice because for a long time there was a gap in i-95 and it never went to trenton the gap was never going to be filled and we've known that since the 80s and now there is no gap and 95 does not go to trenton so absolutely ridiculous that we would be signed 95 south trenton should be philly Got a nice view of the Pulaski Skyway here, and we see it is Highway 1 and 9, Newark and Jersey City. So, a sight from the introduction to The Sopranos. We're playing that game again. Speaking of The Sopranos, this burned out warehouse also features in the opening credits to the show. We're meeting I-78 for Newark Airport and Holland Tunnel, signed the same way it was going northbound, with only very immediate controls, although busy places to be sure, and 95 South Trenton. And our two legs have ended, so we are switching over to our two carriageways instead of three. So we'll have 95 South cars only on the left, and 95 South trucks and buses on the right. Got this sign here that could give us some information. There's nothing on it right now, but it's cool to see that it's there. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff to report on this very busy stretch of road. And we see I-78 itself is sort of its own carriageway as the traffic has already exited 478, but it continues along 95 for a little ways. We pass the Newark Airport, so we see a plane taking off right there. And we get our through traffic sign featured in the opening of The Sopranos. Although that sign isn't there anymore, now we get exit 13, 278 for Elizabeth and Staten Island, two miles away. Exit 13A, Newark Airport, coming up in just a quarter mile. So 278 meets 95 twice. I almost wonder why they don't switch it to an X95 instead of a 78, which it doesn't meet at all. And we see this exit 13, two miles, 278 Elizabeth, this sign we saw in the intro to The Sopranos. But it's not there anymore. This is a few years ago, and if we look at that sign now, it talks about the two bridges that are coming up at exit 13. 
We see our dual carriageways with 278 Elizabeth and Staten Island and some industry in the background. Let's take a closer look at that refinery, which we also see, guess where? And any Sopranos fan will instantly recognize these oil containers and the one with the drive safely sign. And here we get exit 11 and it is for the Garden State Parkway, New Jersey's other major toll road and one we will cover one day. And Woodbridge is more the control city for US 9 than it is for the GSP. We had a lot of Metuch and Love on the northbound video, so we'll take a look at it again on the southbound video. We see North 287 for Metuchen and 440 for Perth Amboy. And this was requested by Warren Freitag, or at least with a larger amount, so I'll mention him again. So thank you so much. Get the Molly Pitcher service area. I actually got off at this service area when I was driving south on the turnpike the one time I ever personally drove south on it. And now we've got exit eight and exit eight is requested by Justin D Music. So I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. Meaning exit 7A, 195 for Trenton and Shore Points. So Trenton gets off here and now we get 95 South Camden. What? So we're not gonna sign Philly, we're gonna sign a suburb of Philly that, uh, guess what, I-95 and the Turnpike don't actually go to, instead of Philly that 95 does go to? What are you doing, New Jersey? My God, that's horrible. Just because it's in New Jersey, sign it over a giant place like Philly. Ridiculous. Here is this exit a few years ago when we could see the old sign that was there before. It was just South New Jersey Turnpike through traffic, better than Camden being there. And that's when the 95 connection had not been made yet. So 95 used to just disappear right here. This is where the gap in 95 started. 95 was signed south up until 195, and then it just went away and magically appeared in the Trenton area. So, wow. Here's exit six, this is our exit. This is where we get off to follow South 95 to West 276, Pennsylvania Turnpike, and Philadelphia is finally mentioned. Ugh, South Camden and Wilmington. I mean, Camden should never be there. It should never be signed for Camden, but the Turnpike doesn't actually go there, and it's a suburb. Wilmington, Baltimore, or just Baltimore would do too. And we are now at 95 South to 276 West, and we are heading westbound toward Pennsylvania at this point, and Philadelphia is signed. On the bridge crossing the Delaware River, we get Pennsylvania on one side and New Jersey on the other side, so that's pretty cool. And I didn't see a Welcome to Pennsylvania sign itself. If you'd like to see a Welcome to Pennsylvania sign, I have, I don't know, 47 different episodes with Pennsylvania in it somewhere, at least it seems that way. You can check out any of those. Here's where we're getting our toll to cross the Delaware River, and we're getting our exit for Levittown and Bristol as well. And here is the new interchange that closed the I-95 gap. So we have 95 South Philadelphia and 276 West Harrisburg. Huh? So they can sign 276 for Harrisburg here instead of Valley Forge, but they can't sign 76 itself for Harrisburg. Makes no sense. Because it's the turnpike all the way, then it works? I don't know, I mean, Harrisburg's the right choice here, but it'd be the right choice downtown too. And here is what our ramps look like as we get onto mainline I-95 and what used to be called I-95 that went up toward the Scudders Falls Bridge. And we see it is built so that we do have northbound and southbound traffic roughly next to each other. So now we're on 95 South Philadelphia and we get 413 for Bristol here. Here in the background, we can see the Betsy Ross Bridge. So I wanted to show this because Ashley requested that in the northbound video and she tipped a lot. So thank you so much, Ashley. And here is the bridge. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we're meeting 676 for Central Philadelphia and the Ben Franklin Bridge. So eastbound 676, we get the Ben Franklin Bridge, which is right there but no mention of New Jersey at all. Here's the place to put Camden on a sign because that's where 676 is going. But in Pennsylvania, we don't get any mention of Camden, only in New Jersey where we get way too many mentions of it. So neither state knows how to sign Camden. Coming to downtown Philly and we are getting 95 South Philadelphia International Airport. I mean, it's good to sign an airport, but it's weird to make that your primary control city in the center of what, the sixth largest city in the country. We meet 76 East, Walt Whitman Bridge. Could have Atlantic City sign there for 76 East, but we don't want to sign anything over in New Jersey whatsoever, and New Jersey does it the same way. 
and 95 South Philadelphia International Airport, so we don't want to sign Baltimore because they job Philly too, so... Again, yeah, East Coast, super petty. Everybody's got to be mad at each other. And speaking of petty, Eagles fans. <laughs> no, I kid, I kid. I actually like the Eagles. I wanted to play somebody else in the Super Bowl that I could wholeheartedly cheer against. I actually do appreciate the Eagles fan base for the most part and generally do cheer for their team in the NFC. Here we have a closer look at their stadium along with whatever the other vet is called these days where the Phillies are playing. We've got our double-decker bridge, and we are crossing going southbound over the river out of town, and it would be so much more impressive going the other way looking at the Philly skyline, but instead we look at basically nothing. This is our exit for the Philly airport, so now we're getting 95 South Chester and Wilmington. Why? Baltimore. Baltimore. And at random interchange, it's just 95 South Chester. I mean, Chester is basically a suburb of Philly. Shouldn't have that on a major road like I-95. If it was a three-digit road, okay, state highway, fine, but not on I-95. Meaning 476, Plymouth Meeting. I mean, I talked about this in the northbound. That's not a great way for 476 to go either. 95 South Chester, Wilmington again. I mean, either just pick Wilmington or put Baltimore on there the way it should be. We meet the Commodore Barry Bridge in Chester, and it is actually acknowledging that it goes to New Jersey. We just get New Jersey itself and no city, and 95 South Wilmington. And here we're meeting 322 for West Chester, not to be confused with Chester Chester, and 95 South Wilmington. We meet 495 just before we enter Delaware, just a little bit before, and it is signed for Port of Wilmington and Baltimore. 95 itself just for Wilmington. They want through traffic on 495. And from what I heard from the comments, sounds like it is a good road. And welcome to Delaware. We are back in Delaware for the final time. Rhode Island and Maine only got the one episode where they got to be featured with I-95. Delaware, hey, you get two as one of the three states with only one two-digit interstate highway. And all three states happen to have the same two-digit interstate highway. And we are getting into downtown Wilmington, and we get Delaware Avenue. Hey, why not? It's Delaware. All right, now we get 95 South Newark and Baltimore. And no, that's not the Newark we were signed for before. That is Newark, Delaware. Probably should just be Baltimore. Newark isn't that big, but it is the home of the Fighting Blue Hens and the University of Delaware, and I assume Joe Flacco. And 295 North for Newcastle, Delaware Memorial Bridge. We are meeting Delaware Highway 1, so this is probably the biggest junction in Delaware. We have Delaware's only two-digit interstate highway, and we have its most important state route that goes south to Dover and throughout the state. At random interchanges, it is 95 North, Delaware Memorial Bridge, Wilmington, and South Newark, Baltimore. Here is the Travel Plaza on the Delaware Turnpike in Delaware, and I believe it is called the Delaware Travel Plaza. Here's our exit for Newark, and we're also getting 896 for Middletown, and it's the last exit before the toll. So you should get off at that one, or actually you should get off at the one before that, at 1B. So again, yeah, friends don't let friends drive on the Delaware Turnpike and pay that extra money. So we see it would take three minutes to drive from this interchange to the other interchange in the Maryland side. But if you get off and go around, it takes nine minutes. So it is only an extra six minutes added to your route. So unless you're making tons and tons of money, probably worth it to skip around. And welcome to Maryland. We don't get a traditional welcome to Maryland sign here. We get welcome to the John F. Kennedy Memorial Highway, which is a toll road in Maryland, at least through part of it. And now that we're in Maryland, we finally get 95 South Baltimore straight up. And we see Baltimore 57 miles away. We cross the Susquehanna River, and because we're going southbound, we cross it for free and not pay the massive toll you pay going the other direction. Meet 695, signed for Essex and Towson. This interchange used to be pretty cool. Both roads used to switch carriageways around, but now it's more of a straight up regular exit. 95 South Baltimore. I mean, 895, the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel. There's an extension on 895 that can take you over toward I-97 to Annapolis. Be nice to have an I-97 mention here. No hazmats allowed in Fort McHenry Tunnel, so this is the exit you must get off at if you have any. And we see a little Baltimore scenery here. And here is our toll heading into the tunnel. 
And going into the tunnel, that building up there, we get that nice welcome to Baltimore thing, and we see our four boars here. Actually, we see three of them. And on the other side of the Fort McHenry Tunnel, we get a pretty decent view of the Baltimore skyline. And we're meeting 395 that will take you into downtown Baltimore and the Baltimore Washington Parkway coming up shortly. And from here, we can see the Ravens Stadium. Camden Yards Orioles Stadium is a little harder to see. I think it's a little bit over there behind it, but it's mostly covered by the Ravens Stadium. Been to both parks, both pretty nice. And we get our exit for 295 South, Baltimore Washington Parkway for Washington, and 95 itself signed for Washington. Interesting that this entire interchange, along with the 395 one, is entirely over water. We're meeting 695 again, and we do get a nice shout out to I-70 for 695 West. 695 East seems like they could give us a I-97 shout out, but you know, I-70 is a bit more important than 97, I guess. And here we have 195 for the BWI Airport. Heading south, we're on 95 Washington Richmond. That kind of matches the northbound Baltimore, New York sign that we see. Now we see Washington Richmond skipping past Washington. And we are at the top of the Beltway. We get 495 West, Silver Spring, Bethesda, and 95, 495 for Washington and Richmond. So they want the through traffic to go that way. And so we shall. Here we are merging onto the Capitol Beltway. And right away we get exit 24 for Greenbelt Station. Actually, a lot of the times when I went to DC from Baltimore, I drove and got off at this Greenbelt Station. It's like a dollar fifty to park and then take the green line into town and just hang out in town all day with that. Good way to go. And now we meet the Baltimore Washington Parkway once again, and if I were driving into central DC and parking in DC, then I would be taking this route from Baltimore. Although some people might prefer to take West 50 Washington into DC, you could get West 50 over to New York Avenue. And now from this point, we're signed 95 495 for Richmond instead of Washington, because we've kind of had our major Washington exits. At random interchanges, it is just South 95 495. Although at this interchange, we get 95 495 for Joint Base Andrews and Richmond. We get a little local and express action here in Maryland. We meet 295 North Washington with National Harbor coming up soon and we will be on the bridge to Virginia shortly. And here we are on the bridge. We get a nice laundry list of exits overhead here. 95, 395, 495. The Springfield Interchange is eight miles away. I-66, 16 and the Dulles Road, 20. And from the Wilson Bridge, we do get a look at downtown DC. This is as good of a look at DC as we get from I-95. And right here at this point, we are technically in a very small corner of DC as well. We cross into Virginia. Virginia is for lovers. Nice overhead sign for a state welcome sign there right on the border. And we get US-1 for Alexandria. And this exit was requested by Mike Scheinberg, who wanted to see this exit going both ways. So thank you so much for that. Really appreciate that. And we are heading toward the Springfield Interchange. We get 95 South Richmond, 495 North Tyson's Corner, and 395 for Washington and Springfield. I guess we're throwing Springfield in for 644, or because if you were going to Washington, you might have already exited. So I-95 looks like it's going straight, but we are actually merging into a southerly direction and off the beltway here. We do have an east-west kind of thing, just like we did with the exit in Pennsylvania. Here's a look at the Springfield interchange from overhead. It is extremely complex and confusing when you're driving on it. And if you look at it from above, that doesn't help much. <laughs> it is a tangled mess and it has been reconstructed many times to be as high speed as possible. Here we are merging in with 395 traffic to head south toward Richmond. And we are meeting 610 East for Acquia, and this was requested by Frank Truslow. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I've been near this exit too. I think I've been to Acquia Harbor before. And our mileage signs, haven't had many of those in this episode. Fredericksburg 15, Richmond 67. Fine secondary Fredericksburg there. And we get back to the Rappahannock River, which is where we will end because from there on it is Southern I-95. So just like with I-90, kind of a weird place to end a major interstate just at this small river in Northern Virginia, but it is where we shall end, the real divide between North and South I-95. So thank you so much, and let's move on to Todd's The Way It Should Be. I'm going to say The Way It Should Be, pretty simple, New York, 
then Newark, then Philadelphia, right from I-78 on, it should be Philadelphia, then Baltimore, then Washington, and then Richmond. I'm not too mad about Wilmington. Wilmington's okay, but all those other cities are just so much bigger that it would make more sense to just go to Baltimore. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Control City Freak and all of these I-95 episodes. It has been a lot of fun to make and we will be getting to a supercut next week. I don't know if I'm going to start with north or south. That is to be determined. But thank you so much for watching. My name is Todd and until next time, keep on trucking.